Okay, so uh, we're going to discuss uh, regarding the hematology one or hematology. Um, our hematology so is divided primarily into two. We have here the hematology one and we have also here the hematology two. For your hematology one, there will be uh, taken up here as, um, in this sem. We'll be discussing in the hematology one all about your RBC, your WBC. Whereas in your hematology two, that will be on the next sem, we'll be discussing all about the platelets and your coagulation factors. Okay, so for the book that we'll be using for both your hema one and hema two, we have here. Okay, the raw duck, uh, hematology, I think that one is the fifth edition of that. Okay, so our topic, our subject is all about here the hematology. So when we speak about the hematology, hematology came from the words hyma, which means blood. And we have here the logi, well, that's something to do with the study of. So from the word itself, we'll be studying here all about the blood. Okay, not only the blood, what about in the blood are we going to study? We're going to study about you know, the different uh, blood cells in your blood, to spend in your blood. So all your blood cells, this includes your WBC, your, your RBC, your platelets. And not only that, we'll be discussing as well here the different disorders associated with the abnormality in the production of your the different blood cells. So, like in your HEMA 1, we'll be discussing all about here the, the RBC. So, we'll be discussing as well the, the different uh, disorder associated with abnormality in the RBC production, leading to different RBC disorders primarily. Uh, we're talking about the anemia. Okay, so we'll be discussing taking up um, the different uh, anemia. And at the same time, since We'll be discussing all about the WBC here in the hematology one. We'll be discussing as well here the different disorders associated with your WBC abnormality. So again, those are the leukemia and many other disorders associated with that. Okay, so again, your blood, uh, uh, aside from your blood, what are B or blood cells here suspended in your blood? What, what are still included uh, in your hematology. We'll be discussing as well here the different blood forming organs. So those are, of course, if you have abnormality with the production, what you have in the peripheral circulation of normal. So that's also a reflection of the um, abnormality in the different blood forming organs in our body. We're talking about abnormality in the bone marrow, in your uh, liver, which also helps especially during the embryonic development or during the fetal development in and all of that one. So our blood is red in color because of course of the pigment hemoglobin suspended in your blood. And your blood is uh, flowing within our blood vessels. And we speak about the blood vessels includes your vein, your arteries, and we have also here your capillaries. Okay, then we have also here the different functions of your blood. The first function we have here, the respiratory function. So as with the respiratory function, your blood, uh, dissolving your blood are gaseous elements that include your carbon dioxide and your oxygen. Oxygen is the gas that we inhale from the environment that it enters your body through your lungs. And then your blood try to distribute your oxygen from your lungs and try to deliver that one different tissues to our body in order for your tissues to have an oxygen for an adequate tissue oxygenation process. If your tissues uh, is deprived here with your oxygen, you call the condition here as uh, tissue hypoxia. And that would result to a tissue death. That's why you should be, the front part of your body should be adequately oxygenated. And that is through your blood, which try to deliver the oxygen from your lungs, going through the different tissues of your body. At the same time, our blood also try to transport your carbon dioxide being produced here uh, in your different tissues of your body through your different uh, metabolic processes. As a product of metabolic processes, you have your carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is being delivered from your tissues, and it's being delivered back to your lungs 
for eventual excretion uh, in the form, carbon dioxide in the form of your carbonic acid. So this is the, the gas we try to be exhaled in our body. Again, carbon dioxide in the form of your carbonic acid. So the second function of your blood, we have here the nutritional, it's also participate here in the nutritional aspect in such a way that your blood try to deliver the products of your digestion process. So after the digestion process, we have here the byproducts, which could be um, being utilized by our bodies, being delivered the different part of your body in order for you then to make uh, a larger molecules. So most likely it's being delivered to your liver where most of your substances, molecules being, uh, uh, being produced through the metabolic byproducts and that's being transported primarily by our blood. Excretory function, so again, your blood could also deliver here the different uh, waste products in our body. Okay, so even the toxins try to deliver that one different uh, organ of elimination of your body becoming part of your excretory system. So deliver to your lungs, to your liver for eventual excretions or even your kidneys and even your skin. Your blood also try to act here as a buffer. So that's to maintain the normal blood pH. The normal blood pH is 7.4. That will have here between 7.35 to 7.45. You take the average of that, that become here 7.4. And uh, we're able to maintain our normal blood pH at pH 7.4 because of the different buffer found in your blood. Uh, you could have the main buffer system where body you have your uh, bicarbonate carbonic acid buffer system. Although your hemoglobin could also function as a buffer, your proteins could also function as a buffer. Then we have here the body temperature. So your blood try to redistribute the different uh, the water, different part of your body acting here as a coolant in order for that then to maintain the normal body temperature. For the next one, we have your transport of the hormones. Hormones are basically produced by the endocrine glands. In each of the different hormones, endocrine glands are ductless gland. Pag sinabing ductless, wala siyang passageway or wala siyang canal-like. Okay, so most of the endocrine gland is being delivered to the different part of your body. So, iba yung uh, nagpaproduce ng endocrine gland. However, ang mga hormones natin, they have a specific target tissue in our body. And most likely, ang target tissue malayo doon sa kung saan sila na produce. Then, for the hormone here to take effects, it needs to reach its target tissues. So, para makaabot doon ang ating hormones to their respective target tissues, since they are ductless, most likely they could diffuse, okay, or most likely they are being carried by the blood in order for them to reach their target tissues in order for them to take effects. Like for example, your growth hormone. Growth hormone is produced by your anterior pituitary gland. So yun ang organ of production niya. Pero ang target tissue niyan ay nasa bones natin, pwede sa liver natin, which is malalayo kung saan siya na-produce. So para makaabot, makaabot siya doon, then that should be carried here by your blood. So serve it here as a transport of the hormone function of your blood. Okay, then we have also here another function of your blood. We have here, that's what is involved in the defense. So, our blood is being suspended by the soldiers in our body. So, we're talking about here the WBC, white blood cells. Their main function is to remove the pathogen that enters our body. So, we have that uh, mga phagocytic cells or phagocytes. Then, it also contains here the antibodies. All of that eventually help her, our body to fight against the foreign antigen or the foreign substance which are the pathogenic substance that enters our body. Okay, then we have here the characteristics of your blood. The first one we have here, blood is fluid in vivo. That one is fluid inside your body. Of course, that one is free-flowing inside your body. It's being, not being clotted, di ba? Kasi pag nag-clot siya, mamamatay tayo. Okay, so what remains here, what is responsible for maintaining the fluidity of the blood inside our body would be the naturally occurring anticoagulant in our body in the form of your heparin. Second one is red in color because of the pigment hemoglobin. 
that gives the duana characteristic color. So, pag medyo uh, maputla ang patient, so expect also na maputla ang red cells ang kanyang hemoglobin, so anemic a patient. The third one is slightly alkaline because the one, uh, because again, uh, the normal blood pH net is 7.4, so that's alkaline. So, and the fourth one, we have here the specific gravity 1.055. And then another characteristic of your blood we have here is thick and viscous. So it's much thicker compared to the water because of the suspended substances in our blood. Okay, then we have here the composition of our blood. So basically we have here the liquid component. Okay, the liquid component. So if you try to centrifuge the blood, so it would separate your blood. So, after centrifugation, we separate ang blood natin. So, we have here on the upper portion, what you have would be the liquid portion. And here, this will become here the PRP, so the pancreatic blood cells, plus the other form elements of that. Okay, for the liquid the portion of your blood, okay, we call that one as, um, that could either be a serum or a plasma. So, we obtain a serum here as a liquid portion of your blood if your blood um, has been collected without an anticoagulant. So, if you just let the blood clot, then after centrifugation, the liquid portion of that, you call that one your serum sample. Since your blood has been clotted, so this is the normal process of the clotting process where your fibrinogen will be converted to your fibrin clot. That's why you have a clotted blood. What activates are responsible here for the conversion of your fibrinogen para magkakaroon ka ng, para magklat ang blood natin would be your thrombin. So here, pag serum sample tayo, since uh, you do not have here the dicoagulant at nagklat na siya, expect na wala ka na nito. Wala ka na ang fibrinogen pag ito ang magiging sample natin kasi nagklat na siya. And what you have here is already the fibrin clot. Wala ka na ang fibrinogen because nagklat na siya, what you have is your fibrin clot. Whereas, the liquid portion here, you call that one your plasma. Again, if that one has been collected, your blood has been added with the anticoagulant. So, pag may anticoagulant ang blood sample natin, like your ETA, for example, your lavender top, um, again, that one did not clot. Your blood will not clot. So, pag hindi siya mag-clot, itong mangyari. Fibrinogen will remain as fibrinogen. Therefore, for the plasma, meron siya fibrinogen because again, your blood remain unclotted. Kaya wala ka nito. Hindi siya nag-convert in your fibrin, fibrin clot. And therefore, what you see here, if you have your plasma, will be the fibrinogen, not with the fibrin clot. But in the serum sample, what you have here will be the fibrin clot. Wala ka ng fibrinogen. So the remaining component of your blood here would be your form elements, or you call it one solid component, or you call it one as your hemocytes. So your solid components, your hemocytes, includes here the blood cells. So we have here the RBC. This is medyo sa taas niya dito. Okay, so dito makikita ang RBC natin, PRBC, pack RBC. And we have here your WBC here and platelets and your buffy coat. So this is the buffy coat area. So this between your liquid portion and we have here the form elements. So what you have seen? We're going to see on that would be your WBC and even your platelets. The other component of the blood, we have here the gaseous elements. Again, we have here the carbon dioxide and oxygen. Okay. Okay, next we have here the blood collection process. So, I think uh, you're familiar with this one already. So, the, we have here the first uh, procedure when you're having the blood collection. So, the first one we have here the positive uh, patient identification. Positive patient identification is very important because if not able to identify correctly the patient, if you have extracted a patient which is not supposed to be, then that become your own use for your results. Okay, so again, our rule here when you are um, going to identify correctly the patient, again, if the patient is conscious, especially for admitted patient, of course, if that one is outpatient, madali lang naman siya. Kasi siyempre, pag nag-outpatient tayo, the one really entering our extraction area will always be the patient. Siya talaga yan. On the other hand, but if the problem you most likely hear if the patient's been admitted in the hospital especially, 
sa mga ward na sobrang dami ng mga beds. So, you need to be uh, very careful with that. Especially uh, sa mga government hospital na sobrang dami ng patient natin. Again, for the rule here with the patient identification, so if the patient is conscious, so let the patient state his full name. Okay, so you ask, ano, what's your name, sir? Ano nga pangalan niyo, sir? Okay, something like that. Do not ask the patient with a question that is answerable by yes or no. Like, do not ask, uh, kay, kayo po si Romy Castor, something like that. Na, just by answer, by answerable here by the yes or no lang. Because again, there's some patient na ayaw nilang kinakausap, we just agree na lang. Okay, so yes, can I, actually, this led on. So, if, for example, there is some confusion pa din, then you could proceed with uh, uh, allowing the patient to state kung anong birth name niya, middle name niya, something like that to further confirm the patient. But of course, here the patient is unconscious, okay, or the patient's baby. Of course, we cannot ask the baby kung anong pangalan ni baby. Di ba, you cannot say, uh, baby, what's your name? Of course, they will not answer you with their name. So, however, here, once they are admitted to the hospital, again, do not rely on the name tag. Usually, may mga name tag ang patient na sa hospital or mga bracelet na tinatawag. Do not rely on that. To further confirm, then you need to ask anyone around, the relatives, or even the nurse in the ward, in charge of the nurse, uh, in charge in the ward, or the nurse, or even the doctor, uh, in charge in the ward of that particular room or area or ward. Of the proper identity of the patient. Okay, then we have also here the physiologic factors. Again, this is very important for you to consider here when you are doing your tests because this uh, physiologic factors, we need to consider this one because again, it will affect, really affects the results if you are not familiar with this physiologic factors.